some of the planet, outer planets. We don't explain it. We don't know yet. We do not have a model at present. We probably will. That's the challenge of science, is to continually work at it. And if indeed any of you want to set out to prove some of this wrong, you are going to contribute to a greater understanding of that circle of light. If indeed you keep your personal biases and subjectivity out and work toward simply unraveling a relationship and describing it. I had a question, I had a couple of them, but this one was very, brought this up, but uh, the, the whole question of dating, several questions came about, you know, the part of the read, the dating of how, how we know that the earth is old or young by dating process, in other words, by actually um, these different dating, carbon-14 you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And someone here says, and I don't know if this is a true statement, that uh, recent published dates of the Grand Canyon gave base, uh, basement rocks on the bottom of the Grand Canyon dates almost one billion years younger than the rocks at the top, and that they were saying how there is not. What is your, what causes you to be confident or not confident in the dating mechanisms of today for dating the earth should we I mean you don't take one data point uh, if you remember in in sampling or in math statistical data are worthless unless you have a sufficient cohort of people or a, a number of points and when you see these scatter plots and conclusions are only drawn if you have enough data points and if you've got a, a, say a thousand data points you're going to find some of these puppies are way off. And if you made your conclusion based on that one, you would be lost. But that's one of the reasons why science thrives on public display of working hypotheses as targets to shoot at. That's how we learn. Because like the blind man and the elephant, we only see our one perspective. And we talk about the universe and the earth. We're talking about so many different fields. How do you um, refute the dating, in other words, the okay. fact that they're dating and saying billions of years, that these dating techniques are showing millions and billions of years, how do you, use, and you say an early Earth, or um, is that the right terminology? Yes, sir. Call yes, sir. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, Dr. Hiltman stated earlier that uh, he knew the Earth was billions of years old based on radiometric dating. I believe that's an exact quote. Uh, and the, uh, I need to point out to the audience that the great ages for the Earth was established long before any of the radiometric dating methods were invented, before any of the radio carbon dating, potassium argon, uranium lead, before the, anybody even thought of those, they had already agreed the Earth was billions of years old. Now who were these people who agreed, by the way? Look up anybody in the 18th century, any of the old textbooks, uh, whether Charles Lyell. Lyle taught the Earth was many thousands of years old. Yes, it did. Based on the geologic column on the order of the strata. On sedimentary records. Sedimentary records. Which are so, just about as valid as some of the others. And it has improved. And if you look at the age of a, a, the Earth when it was projected, mm -hmm. and look at the year in which that projection was made, and you put those on a graph, and you will see the closer you come to 1992, the greater the, the, the age of the Earth. Oh, and it'll get older, like you said. It'll go to 4.7 sure. billion. And, and it's just like with pi. We're refining the number out further and further. Well, I would disagree there. I don't think it's refining it. I think they keep mm. adding more time because they come across more problems that they can't solve in a limited time. <laughs> Lyle said it was 80,000 years old, and the Earth has now grown to 4.7 billion. So it's getting older at the rate of 65 million years per year. Uh, What's wrong with it? What's, why, why do you not have confidence in their dating mechanism scientifically? Why well, it was it was... The dating methods are based on the geologic column. If I brought a fossil to any university and said, I would like you to date this for me, their first question would be, where did you find it? Because they want to establish an approximate range based on the geologic column. Then they will break off samples and they will test it for either uranium or potassium or lead or whatever radiometric element they're looking for. Uh, which decay method they're using, depending upon the approximate age. Uh, when they went to the moon, they brought back lunar soil. They tested it eight different ways. Science Magazine, 1970, published all the information about that. They obtained eight different ages, all the way from 2 billion to 18 billion. So they decided that none of them were accurate. They threw them all out and picked a number out of the clear blue sky and said the moon was 4.6 billion to match the age of the Earth. Why do you think they threw those dates out? 
because it didn't match their prediction, their ex expectation. But it illustrates the point that the radiometric dating is only used to try to further bolster the geologic column dates. The two are trying to Let's work stop, synonymous. Why do you okay. think they threw them out? You had, you sound I like think you just, had a thought there. Well, I have a thought of the fact that they were unaccept the scatter was unacceptably scattered. They get that scatter every time they date anything. It means that, no, no, that's not true. Oh, yeah. well, okay. All right, let's go to lead uranium. Okay. Uranium we know quite a bit about because it unfortunately has some characteristics that can be used for good or for evil, and sure. evil tends to really get in there quickly. I'll have sin. Go uh, well, that's your bag. I'm, I'm not pushing that one. But nonetheless... <laughs> We have today... You led me into that one. That's you know right, that. I know. I'm a terrible fisherman. <laughs> we have today, and you all are part of a great example of what our society is not doing about this earth. We're happy to use the results or the fruits of radioactivity in the East and the West, in a lot of places, not Missouri and Kansas so much, are dependent on nuclear power. We're producing radioactive wastes that are a tremendous threat and doing nothing about it. Since 1960s, when I first did, was at KU working on radioactive disposal methods and research over at the Kansas Geological Survey, we were working on it then, nothing's been done since. But we do know this, that you can't take radioactive material, uranium or thorium or even some of the artificial ones, and change it. You can't speed it up or slow it down. You can freeze it, you can zap it with a laser, you can swear at it, you can do whatever you wish, and it continues in its way of decaying in a predictable way. And the radioactive dating with uranium and lead is effectively based on the half-life of the uranium and how much lead we have and how much uranium we had and making the assumption which is accepted by anyone who has worked with this as valid is that if we start with the uranium and see how many how much of it is now daughter lead we know how much time it took for those uranium atoms to convert to lead and that basis irrefutably gives consistent data and that technology as opposed to some of the others is quite good. That does not mean that someone can misread it just as much as I have had people stick a thermometer in my mouth and tell me that I had a fever and I read it and it says it 98.7 and I said, well I must have read it wrong. Well that human error is present everywhere but the procedure when done under controlled conditions and by a number of labs consistently converge on about a 4.5.6 for the Earth, not for the universe. The universe is say about four times older. And um, yes, you can, you can come up with, with data that are wrong and they're thrown out because they're garbage. Okay, uh, the best illustration of the uh, dating methods, uranium, lead, potassium, argon, uh, whichever one they want to use, would be the illustration, if you walked into a room and a candle was burning on the table, and I asked you the question, when was it lit? Well, you could measure the rate of burn and find out that the candle is currently burning one inch per hour. And if the candle is six inches tall and it's burning at an inch an hour, and I ask you the question, when was it lit? You could, you could tell me when it will go out. It'll go out in six hours. But you can only tell me when it was lit if you, gave, if you were allowed two assumptions. Number one, you would have to assume an initial height. How tall was it? We don't know. Number two, you would have to assume that that rate of burn has remained constant for the entire time it's been burning. Based on those two assumptions, you could give a reasonable answer. But if either assumption is wrong, your answer is wrong. So all of the dating methods are based